Greetings, family, and welcome to another episode of Wake Up Africa. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How you doing? How's everything going, family? I'm reporting live and direct from the heavens, literally. Uh, we're so grateful to have rain here in Kenya today, well, at least in the village where I live. It's been super, super hot. For the first time, it was even above 30 degrees, which is what, above 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit? It's been really, really hot, family. And, you know, there's a lot happening around the world. And there's, I just thought I'd um, talk a little bit more about some of the major events that are happening around this April 8th uh, solar eclipse. Please check out the first video that I did, uh, kind of giving my opinion on what I think is going on. But family, uh, it's before I even get into that, it is so important that you be in your own narrative at this time. It is absolutely critical. It is absolutely critical. And um, that brings me to the sponsor of today's show, family. It's, uh, it's an honor to be sponsored by, you know, Gail Ferguson. She is the director of De Ankh, The Science of a Kemetic Yoga, which is a documentary that you can rent on Vimeo. And it is such a good place to start when we talk about our narrative to kind of get an idea of who our people were. So the documentary goes into our consciousness, our diet, our history, our human genome, um, our spirituality, our total health and wholeness. And it grabs, you know, it, it gets very into very interesting conversations with some of the leading experts from that field and also looks at why you know yoga came from us family but for more details definitely check out Ankh you know the it's a great great documentary de Ankh the science of kemetic yoga all the links will be down below family so I found something very interesting apparently both CERN and NASA have announced very big plans for the April 8th solar eclipse. And it's something that we should definitely pay attention to, family. Uh, so NASA actually came out. And remember, family, when I talk about narratives, we are literally in a mental reality. Our words manifest, but in a super, super complex way. And this is something that the dark arts, um, you know, crusaders or Zionists, whatever you want to call them. They've used this to create, to use predictive programming and to use the power of our group consciousness to create their world, to, to control the world, um, maybe even to try and destroy the world family. And so I actually feel like with what's coming, they really are not in control of the situation, of what's coming from outer space. Because number one, NASA has said that they're going to be throw, like, well, you know, shooting a couple of atmospheric rockets at the solar eclipse, during the solar eclipse, to try and measure the weather and all these things. No, family, this sounds like they're launching a defense. This sounds like Trump's space force, literally. So I found that really out of the ordinary. And remember, family, for the, the people who control the world, they always have to tell us what they're doing. And they don't just tell us what they're doing just like that, but they also use a very organized and scripted system of gematria so it's all in the numbers they recognize that the universe is symbolic and responds to us symbolically more than it does to our words words are just for spelling here on earth and for spelling spe putting spells on yourself putting spells on your others especially this english language but it's i i found it very interesting that nasa would also announce at such a late juncture that they were planning to throw these rock, atmospheric rockets. And then, at the same time, family, CERN has also come out and said that they're ready to test the world's most powerful accelerator during April's solar eclipse to search 
for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. And you know, I, I, I don't know if I've launched, I've released the video I did on The Simpsons, how The Simpsons are not predicting reality. They're literally trying to create reality. And one of the, the premonitions or one of the predictions that they made for 2024 is that there would be some kind of black hole that opens up in the divided states or something, or the black hole that swallowed some people up. And we saw Bart and um, Homer being swallowed up in this uh, black hole. But anyway, so why would they test it? We've had so many different eclipses, family. Why would they choose this particular eclipse to test CERN? And, and CERN has been dormant. Why would they put on CERN now specifically for April 8th? Could it be that it's not a solar eclipse and it's actually the return of Nibiru? And they have no idea. Because I've also noticed the, the, the stories on the Anunnaki and all this stuff are on overdrive, especially if you go on TikTok. It's all on overdrive family. And for me, when I, when I read this, because you see, Babylon always wants us to think they're high and mighty, they're in full control, um, you know, they're the ones, they're the puppet masters. They love it when we talk about the Illuminati controlling the world and all these things. They absolutely love that. But when I look at this family, and because I, I feel like Babylon, when they're talking to the world, they talk to the world like the world is a six-year-old. But it's up to you now, as a fellow adult, to figure out what they're trying to tell the six-year-old and what they're omitting. For me, for both CERN to be turning itself on and for NASA to be shooting rockets, I believe like these are the two most powerful instruments that, and you know, CERN isn't the only hard on collider, right? There's another one in, I think, Georgia or something, but it is the most powerful and that it must be on some important ley line or whatever. But anyway, besides that, these are the most powerful weaponry that they have. So for me, it's like they're either going into defense. This is, it's nothing to do with experiments, family. They're either going into defense mode or they're going into offense mode. But how does that affect I and I? I think for me, family, I'm still on this thing that they are going to try and pull something off. I saw in the comments, guys were saying, oh, no, it's just another 1999, year 2000 situation, like what they did last time. There'll be all this hype, and then nothing will come out of it. Uh, I personally, there's a lot of biblical prophecy that is being fulfilled right now. I personally don't think the, the so-called powers that be are in power. I think they're actually fighting for their survival. And there is definitely something coming. So for me, the precautions I'm taking is I'm just, you know, I have food growing in my garden, so I'm all good for that. But I'm just going to make sure that I have like extra water, um, the extra, you know, minor things. But for me, one thing I'm stocking up on before April 8th is definitely fuel. I'm definitely topping up my, filling up my tank, getting a couple, cause I have a few jerry cans from the last, from the times we've been ready. I'm gonna definitely top that up so that at least I'll have the freedom of movement if sugar should hit the fan. If you are in the divided states family, please do not take this lightly. There is a major secret society war going on in the divided states right now. And I'll definitely be talking more about this. I talked about this in 2020 or when Trump ran for election or whatever. And there, that secret society war is major. Everything that's happening with Diddy is related to that. I'll do a whole separate show on that. This is Errol. But if you are in the divided states, stock up, family. I hope stock up, be secure, be indoors. Stay prayed up. Make sure your spiritual protection is on point because something is definitely going to go down. They're definitely going to try and pull off something. And the reason sometimes they'll, they'll try and predictly, predictively program a major event and then it doesn't happen is because enough of us become aware of it and we start to say no or we, we kind of dilute their whole agenda. 
because we reveal the secret parts of it. You see, they try and tell you a story without revealing the secret parts of what's going on. But anyway, family, it's literally under a week away. So stay prayed up. Do what you can. Listen to what the Spirit is telling you. And as I always say, this is another confirmation of why we really need to be in our own narratives, family. Because Babylon is doing their thing, but they got all of us involved. They got all of us consumed. They've got all of us like this. But it will be interesting to see once whatever happens to America happens, how the, how the dust will settle, family. And, you know, as I talk about the importance of being in our own narrative, special shout out to Gail uh, for sponsoring today's show, family. Definitely check out her documentary. It is worth a watch. There's so many nuggets of information you can get in. You can get from it, family. de the science of Kemetic Yoga. And it's a really, really good place to start in terms of who were we as a people? You know, what do we need to know about our consciousness, our diet, our history, and all that, family? All the links are down below. Stay prayed up, family. Until next time. Tuko Pamoja. We have to find ways to uh, understand by tuning in. That's why yoga is so important. That's why the whole uh, philosophy of uh, understanding who we are by eating the right foods, keeping the right mental balance in terms of our thoughts. But yeah, all of the health concerns, the major health issues that, that we are challenged with in the black community come from an improper, improper perspective you know, that we have regarding uh, diet. They don't know what our history is. They can't teach it. They can't share it. It's really up to us to go back and do the reading and to learn it and to fight to reclaim our legacy and to make sure that people respect it, acknowledge it, and use it to empower ourselves again. Many, many of us don't have that trust in. That we don't even trust our intuition. We don't trust um, the information, the messages that we're receiving from the other side. Certainly, genomics has made it very clear that human origins uh, are rooted in Africa.